night, imagine that. Uh, and I got a message, but I just feel something is stirring. I just want to let you know I'm not mad. Okay, I'm a little frustrated. I'm not frustrated with you all. Fighting frustration that I feel many people are fighting in the earth, sensing that there's more, sensing that his return is soon coming, and then looking at my life and saying, what am I doing? I had a two, three hour meeting today about why I'm not interested in playing church at Heart of the Father. We, we got this new facility so that we could just grow apathetic or complacent. You're going to have to find another pastor. I'm like, I'm burning. The title of Sunday morning's message is Burning for Revival in the Midst of Poopy Diapers, <laughs> Bills, and Schedules. What have you got going on? Should I say, what's your excuse? I get it. I, I get we got this and we got that and I got that, but Lord, I'm burning. On earth as it is in heaven, what does that look like practically? But there's got to be more than what we're experiencing. I know that there's more in Christ Jesus. I was having lunch with Brother Ken Malone, a good friend pastor for 25 years and the Lord has kind of released him into an apostolic role with Dutch Sheets and some others and I was eating with him and I asked him this week, I said, if you could go back and you could do it all over again what would you change? He said, easy I'd raise the bar higher I would have asked people to pray more, I would have asked people to give more, I would have asked people to evangelize more, all the things I just share with them, what's burning on my heart and I'm just taking that along with, with so many other words of encouragement of beloved. It's time to run. Well, where are we running to? Into the heart of the Father. We're running from the spirit of the age. We're, we're saying no to ungodliness and, and yes to righteousness. I'll share this on Sunday, but you know, I had a dream the other night about this ice cream store. about the city of Lakeland and every, everybody's been tasting the same flavor for years. <laughs> Here comes Heart of the Father as this new flavor. And everybody likes to taste because it's different than the old flavor, but now we're just going to settle. The Lord said to me, no one knows, but there's 21 more flavors. <laughs> Time to get a taste for more. Oh, I want to challenge our poor people, people that are here, you've been walking with us. We gotta ride. We gotta run. We gotta go deeper. We gotta go higher. We gotta fast more. We gotta pray more. Not so that we can obtain some burden on us and get burned out. It's all birthed out of intimacy. It's birthed out of a love relationship. And a student of revival, you know, you know why revival is encouraging to me? Because it happened with everyday people happened with lawyers and it happened with doctors that said I've got all this going on but Lord my heart's burning for you yes, Lord. I'm telling you wherever you're at tonight the word of the Lord is burn burn at your job burn in your marriage burn when you're when you're changing poopy diapers even though they stink burn when, when you, you just can't pay the bills Burn when you have a schedule and you can't make it. The Lord looks at the heart. And I just sense that supernaturally the grace of God is going to begin to fall on people's hearts and the Lord is going to begin to have opportunities. I've been praying about doing Friday night awakening meetings here at Heart of the Father. If you don't feel fire, you don't have to come. If you feel fire, come. Anybody feel fire? Amen. Hallelujah. We can dance around people on fire all day long. We can get in the fire. We can pray about and sing about altars and fire, but sooner or later we got to jump in it. So I'm just putting everything on the table. You 
know, I, I love to ask old people, am I crazy? And I try to, you know, get some, get some wisdom here. I'm, I know I'm zealous and I keep going to old people and they're telling me, dude, go for it. I haven't met any one person that's trying to put out the fire because they're recognizing, I wish I burned like you when I was your age. Let's burn them in the nursery. Let's set them on fire in the kids' church. Would to God that we would start taking that ministry seriously. Where are the burning ones that are going to pour into kids at heart of the Father? Where are mothers and fathers that are going to rock babies and pray in the Spirit over them and prophesy destiny? Invite them in. Just picture it in your mind. Invite them. 
Start inviting them into your house. Start inviting them into your workplace. Start asking the presence of God to fall upon that person at work that you can't get through. You need the anointing. You need the presence of God. You can't do it on your own. There's just this revelation that's going on tonight all over this room. The Lord's revealing, yeah, you can't do it on your own. You've been praying for so long and not inviting him in. Invite him in. Just believe him for breakthrough tonight. Thank you that you're healing marriages in this room. There's some real repentance that's going to take place tonight in some marriages. The Spirit of God is going to come and bring conviction. There's some talks that need to happen in marriages in this room tonight. Well, we lay it all on the table. I just feel like even some of us are hoarding the gifting of God. Some of us are hoarding the fire. Some of us have been gifted with healing and workings of miracles and prophecy and evangelism. The Lord says, stop hoarding what I've given you. Release it. It's not for you, it's for them. Why do you think I sent you there to groan and complain? Release the kingdom. got saved. He's reminding you why He delivered you from the dominion of darkness into the marvelous light. Some people have been saved so long you're depressed. Awaken the first love reality. Lord, restore passion. I just feel like the Lord even wants to release the ability to dream again in this place. There's women in this room that your father would never listen to your dream. And the Lord says tonight, I as your father release you and give you permission to share with me and share with others the dream that I placed upon your heart. There are men in this room and you were always a bother to your father. You always felt busy when you talked with him and the Lord says, I am not busy. You do not bother me when you come before me. So people know you need to know tonight that you have heaven's attention. You don't have to wait till he gets home from work to talk to him. He's here now. this environment that we're not victims. Lord, I just pray that you would break that victim mentality tonight that's holding some people in bondage. There's just poverty 
that's operating in our midst and the Lord wants to do, do away with that. Some of us are operating on meager possibilities. Poverty spirit didn't have anything to do with finances. I'm talking about operating with meager possibilities. Some of us are looking at the wall like Jericho and saying it's too big. And the Lord's saying it's time to shout. You keep on walking. You keep on marching. Tonight says the Lord, I am not worried about the future. I am not fearful. I'm not filled with any type of anxiety or worry or paranoia. Partner with my nature. Partner with my character. I want to bring you to alignment, says the Lord, with my good and my perfect will. on what it is that I've called you to do in this season. I just, I feel like the Lord is saying that there's some people that are going to miss out on what the Lord is doing in this season because you're worried about the future season. And the Lord says you're going to need this season, this now season to get through the future. see people have dreams of ministry and dreams of marriage and and dreams of open doors and all that's good and fine but focus on this season be present in this season says the Lord God help us not to miss it Lord we need some keys that you're releasing now Some of us need to go through inner healing. I just feel like some people are going to have to go to counseling to save your marriage. maturity, Lord, where we don't have to be teachable anymore. Being teachable, meaning be able to relearn that which you think you already know. The Lord is releasing a teachable spirit, a childlike spirit in this place, and He's saying, I want to re-teach you. You're going to relearn that which you think you already know. 
There's some older saints in this room and the Lord's saying, it's going back to the kids' church. It's going back to infancy that's going to unlock the doors in these last days. It's a difference between being childish and childlike. Some of us need to move beyond being childish to, to ask the Holy Spirit what it means to be childlike. Lord, help us to work on whatever that we need to work on. God, don't let us be blinded by our own pride and arrogance. Oh, Holy Spirit. Oh, God. Oh, Lord, deal with our pride. The feelings that we've arrived, that we've got at this. Oh, Lord, rebuke us. Some of us are trying to, to, to make our marriage seem like it's great, like our life is great. Don't do it. Bring the light in the darkness. Ask for help. You just see people headed for troubled water and the Lord says, ask for help. Some of us are driving around lost. Ask for directions. not about people making themselves available to you. It's about you making yourself available to the Lord. their wings about, struggling just to stay in the air. The Lord says, you will be one that will soar like the eagle. Because you are a daughter that's found your hope in me. And even as many young women are placing their hope in men, says the Lord, that too will fade. Keep your hope in me and I will open up that door. I will open it up to a door to a man, says the Lord, that's putting his hope in me as well. There's a theme, there's an anthem. I prophesy a, a marriage of hope, a coming together of hope, says the Lord, that will be a message to the youth, that will be a message to the young people on the streets that I'm calling you to minister to. The Lord says, don't look for an organized youth group. Don't look for kids in a classroom. Look for ones that I'll draw your heart to. Those are the ones that I've called you to minister to. Lord, I just release peace over Erica tonight, God. I just feel that there's a needed peace or we just speak of settling God to any unsettling in her spirit just feel like the Lord is saying the rock the rocking of the boat is going to cease 
we just prophesy peace right now that the rocky will cease in Jesus name yeah there's there, that's the ministry that God has given you there's others around you that struggle with fear and anxiety and worry. I see it in your family line. There's an anxiousness and a worry and a fear that has plagued many around you. But the Lord has even strategically placed you and your family to be that one that whose boat is still. There are times where you have to go out in the storm and the boat rocks. The Lord says it's time to bring it back to calm waters. The Psalm 23. Lying down by green pastures. Renewing your soul. There's a renewal. The Holy Spirit is releasing over you. Even Feel the Holy Spirit saying it's time to get back to your roots. Get back to what I planted inside of you six years ago. Those moments, they'll come. 
It's not about receiving specific instruction in this season. It's about saying yes to my whisper. There's a sensitivity that God is releasing over you tonight. To be sensitive to the whisper, the zephyr winds of God.
Lord says the outfit that you're wearing tonight is not who you are, it's what you do. And there's a change even of clothing that's necessary when you enter into the house of God and you enter into the anointing. Even as the priests would change their robes and their garb, the Lord says even when you begin to walk into the presence, bring a change of clothes. There's an invitation to grow very comfortable in the presence of God. Not apathetic, not lethargic, but comfortable in the manifest presence of the Lord. And the Lord says, I'm about to deal with anything and everything that's making you uncomfortable. The Lord says, you can prolong the plans that I have in your life. You can continue to extend them. Or you can begin to change your clothes and say yes. There's an inner court ministry. It's the high priestly ministry of intercession that God has given you. And the Lord says, don't stay in the outer courts. Enter in. There's a revelation of the blood of Jesus that allows us to enter in that he's going to release to you if you'll ask him. There's a revelation of Jesus that he's releasing. Don't worry, she'll go in with you. That's why the Lord gave you to her, said the Lord, to walk her into the inner courts to the Holy of Holies and you will minister alongside one another. And there's power that's there, Joel. There's power. You stand up right there. Yeah. Lord, I just thank you for this burning man. You're going to give permission to other people in your day to burn. Father says there's people on that campus. They're looking for permission to burn. And you will be one that will give people permission to burn all the days of your life. And you will surrender. And you will submit to other burning men and women. And you will learn from them. And you will ask questions. And I will woo you. And I will astound you in my word. And I will take you into the deeper realms of glory. And then I will give you your ministry. I will give you what I've released to you. I will give you a ministry to the family, says the Lord. I will give you a ministry to those that are on drugs and alcohol, those that are oppressed, those that are bound up, and the, and the enemy has come in and destroyed. But the Lord says, do not reject your calling. Do not suppress it, but embrace it. You must embrace your calling, says the Lord. Know that I will surround others around you to tweak it. There's as iron sharpens iron. Be adaptable, be portable, says the Lord, but don't reject your calling. It's been evident all your life. You've been set apart since birth. Embrace it. Give people permission to burn. Invite others to tweak it. Invite others to, as iron sharpens iron, but look for those around you that are burning. They're the gateway to what God has in the future. I've sent you to this land, says the Lord. Many prophets have died here. The valley of dry bones in Lakeland, it's full of the prophets. They've slaughtered them here in this land. The Lord says there's a Recognize the bones are not dead, they're just dry. The bones are not dead, they're just dry. At least the river. Everything that needs circulation.
said no to division and strife. Even at the height of the day that you lived in, though the glory fell, the strife and the bitterness and the division was strong. The Lord says, because you've chosen the better way, because you've chosen the better way, you will be a vessel of my glory. to release prophetic messages of warning of impending division. The Holy Spirit's going to give you the ability to see when things actually happen to release a prayer agenda. Holding the bonds of peace and unity. Wow, thank you, Lord. I trust you with that. It's an honorable thing. Father honors you by entrusting you to help take care and ward off division. Speaks over you, a woman of unity. Let's all cross over. That's what you guys did. recognize the calling in former seasons, but in this season it seems to elude you what exactly, what precisely has the Spirit of God called you to do David and Julie I see you in a holding pattern and the plane that's going to land but I just hear the only instruction is buckle your seatbelt. Yeah, I, I see you guys boarding so many planes in these other seasons, and oh, baby, those planes are going down. They're going to crash and burn. And you guys are running around like, like a stewardess or a steward would on a plane and trying to get everybody oxygen before the, the imminent happens. Now you find yourself on your own plane and it's so unfamiliar to put oxygen over your own mouth because you've spent so many years making sure other people can breathe. I hear the Spirit of God saying, the specific and the exact assignment that I have for you in this season is to breathe. Though seems small, the Lord says, I consider it the weightiest task that I've ever given you in any season. For know if you'll learn how to breathe, says the Lord. 
I will allow you to walk on other planes, and they will not go down. They will not crash you. Just pray for fresh oxygen. Lord, deep breaths. Lord, we break off that fear. Lord, anything of impending disaster, anything that's about to happen that's going to shake the plane or shake the ship, Lord, we just do away with that. I just release the peace and the comfort of God over you. Just ride with them. Just breathe. just thank you for this meeting tonight, Lord, and we're just hungry for more. Lord, let us be known as people that have that distinguishing mark. we got to have your presence. we got to have your anointing. we got to have your words of life and spirit. We've got to have destiny. We've got to have fire. Lord, teach us how to burn in Lakeland. Not just dancing around people that are on fire. It's time to get on fire ourselves. Pray for every word that was spoken tonight. Lord, we seal it. In the name of Jesus, the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, if there's anything that we can receive from this atmosphere, this personal ministry, we just receive it for ourselves. Fan in the flame, the gift of God. love you tonight. Thank you for your sweet, sweet presence. We tell you that you're worthy. I'll go ahead and sing that. You won't relent.